I was very interested to see that Target is now carrying um, tubes of paint as opposed to those sort of jars of craft paint. These are also uh, more expensive than their regular jars. So they're $3.99 at least at my Target per tube, which is still cheaper than, you know, most other acrylic paints. Um, the color palette is somewhat limited. I couldn't find a yellow. They didn't, I wanted to do primary at first with yellow, blue, red, but they didn't really have what I wanted. So I just got a range to see. So I'm here in my art journal. This happens to be watercolor paper. This is regular cardstock. Um, there's a hole in this. So maybe I will put something behind it here. Um, but I thought this would give us a good opportunity to see how transparent, opaque, all that kind of stuff this paint is. So the tube opens pretty easily. Um, so here's some of the green. Ooh, it looks like a nice heavy bodied paint. I think this will be nice for um, gelatin printing. I want to try that out. There's the pink. The colors are pretty true to the bands on here. I mean, they're not identical, but they're close. Let's see how the orange looks. That's very heavy body. I mean, these are these are stiff. They're hanging out. I like it. Okay, there's that pretty blue. Let's see. So first, I mean, since they're heavy bodied, there you go. Seems to be a nice thick paint. Um, let's see what happens with a brush. So again, I suspect these are going to be pretty transparent. Yeah, I can still see everything through here, but that's to be expected. Most craft paints kind of are. Um, let's see if I can't clean up that brush and let's try all of the different colors. There's a slightly funny smell, I have to say. Um, and it, ugh, <coughs> I just held it directly up to my nose. Um, it's very ammonia-y is what I would say. Um, so if you're sensitive to smells, these are definitely not a good choice for you. But the colors are really pretty. I'm gonna do so, a little bit of color mixing after I finish this. So I would say nice colors, bright, intense. Um, they're obviously transparent, which you can see because you can still see these stamped images, this tape, et cetera, through here. Um, but transparent, you know, paints are great for all sorts of stuff. It's just good to know what you're working with. It's not a judgment call. Um, but, and you can see some of the color mixing we sort of started here, actually getting towards a nice red when you mix up the magenta and the orange. And I think the green and blue, I'm thinking it dries really fast because the green and blue really did not mix that much. What you can mostly see is the transparent green over the blue, but the colors didn't actually mix. So I might wanna try a little bit of mixing them together. So, I mean, this is tacky, but it's not like, I mean, full palm, it's not like it's soaking wet. So dries really fast, which is good to know. Do a little bit of mixing while I put that aside. So knowing that it dries so fast, let's put out a little bit of green and a little bit of blue, because I know that's gonna make, well, I don't know, but I assume it's gonna make a pretty color. Then maybe use the palette knife to mix that up. So yes, I would say this is a really nice, I'm gonna spread it out so you can really see it. That's a really nice green that you're getting, sort of a darker, more foresty green. And we can probably improve it even more by changing the ratio. I really hope you can't hear the lawn mowers right now. So here I've put out twice as much blue as green. This is a gorgeous color that I want to like dive into. 
And I'm just going to take a little bit of gesso. If you've never done any color mixing, by the way, I strongly encourage you to give it a try. It's a way to get so much more out of your paints. I do have an online class about color mixing, but you can see that just by adding white, I'm now getting this lovely teal color. And if I add less white, mm, look how pretty that is. I need something to put it on. Check that out. Isn't that a nice color? I like that a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and make a color chart um, and I'm gonna do some tinting and shading as well so that I can see how all these four tubes mix. Here is my color chart all finished and um, a couple interesting things. There are some nice skin tones in some of these mixes. There are also some surprising colors in here. Um, I think that for the most part these may not be the best colors to mix but I will say that the apple tends to mix more like a yellow than a green. Um, I do like the full range of greens. The purples are really pretty and getting a nice purple is often difficult. This orange plus orchid I think is one of my faves and I really like this tinted one. But these are pretty much dry, you know, and it's pretty fast. So I would say nice and tense, really great on a white background, definitely going to be transparent. They mix well with other brands of paints. I was using a uh, um, golden black and I'm just using a Liquitex gesso as my white. So, so far so good. Let's try some gelatin printing. some of the prints that I made um, obviously light background darker color on top the ghost print under here is very very faint the ghost on this was so light and in fact the green over the magenta just barely worked because again it's transparent so I added some white to the green and you can see how much better it shows up I would say that I had to add a lot more paint to my plate than I thought that I was going to have to. And by the way, these stencils are ones I designed for the Crafters Workshop. Um, so you uh, have the links down in the show notes so you can check that out. Um, but yeah, I would say they're fun for printing, but I would probably stick to mixing them with white or something in order to get that more opaque-like look that I happen to like or save them for backgrounds. Okay, so I thought I would do a little bit of head-to-head -head competition. So this is the Handmade Modern, and I have two other craft paints because I thought they would be the most similar. So I have Crafters Workshop um, Blue Jelly Bean. You can see not the same color at all, but similar. And then Liquitex Basics. This is a cobalt blue. And I have a little chart here. And what I'm going to basically do is do it out of the tube, tint it, shade it, add yellow, add red, see what happens, see how the different paints interact. Here are, is my sort of head-to-head -head comparison. Um, so at first I accidentally grabbed, I'll just show you the two tubes. This is the black, this is dioxazine purple. Um, from the top they look very much the same and I kept wondering why this was going so purple when I was mixing it and that's why. Um, but I think the colors here are really interesting, those rich navies. The greens are lovely. The purples are really nice too. I did find almost across the board that I needed twice the amount of blue to get to a purple. This is sort of half red, half blue. This is twice because I think it's because I'm using um, golden 
as my mixer. It's just a stronger um, paint. It's more pigmented because it's more of an artist quality paint as opposed to these craft paints. I did think they were surprisingly similar here. Um, even though this is a different color, these two are kind of close, but I would say even though this is a different color, the mixes and stuff ended up being, especially in the greens, ended up being fairly similar. So interesting. I would say that the handmade modern paints feel very equivalent to the Liquitex Basics, um, and to the TCW, the Crafters Workshop heavy body paints. So and, and they're cheaper, so why not?